Chinese characters. Even if you're a native speaker, I have 10 characters today that are common characters that I want to see if you know what they are. Now, what do I mean? Well, the handwriting forms. I'm going to show you how these would have been written even when I was a kid. So people back then, these would have been pretty much the standard forms for any adult to write. But these days, with the younger generation and texting, this art of writing Chinese characters or Japanese is a dying one. Less and less people are able to actually handwrite characters, even native speakers. And so we're gonna have a fun game today. I've got 10 characters for you. See if you know what these are when I write them. Okay, we're gonna start with an easy one. This first character, most people should know, if you, especially if you're a native speaker. Here we go, you ready? Tick tock, tick tock, what is that character? Well, if you've ever learned Chinese calligraphy, this is one character that you would see a lot. What is it? Well, let's break it down. Normally when you see these and you're wanting to work out what it is, we need to break it up in parts if it's handwriting. Now, yes, this is Chao Shu, uh, the grass writing form, but it could also be the Xing Shu, Xing Shu, um, or Hang in Cantonese is running writing. So normal cursive writing. That's somewhere between Kaishu, the printed text, and the full-on Chao Shu crazy writing. So you could have this also as Xing Shu, but let's see, we break that down so that's a stroke. And then what do we have? We have this line here. Now that almost looks like a Hung stroke coming down, and then it's going out and that. Normally when I see this, I know that this is going to be that, something like that. When you do that, you get this coming in like this. And so let's see if I write this coming down and I've got that there. Well, I know what it is. It's this. Okay. So yes, this is the Yong. Now it's a very wonky Yong, meaning forever. Now the components there, and this is why we use it. We've got the Dian, we've got a Hung coming up here. We've got a Shu coming down. We've got a Go kicking off there. Now we have this bend coming down here. Now we've got this Na stroke coming down here and the Pie coming down like this. Now, the reason why this is like that, this pier stroke, um, if you look with a brush, it normally comes down, out, and when you do that with a brush, you're actually lifting the brush and just bringing it back in. So what happens, it comes in like that, bang, bang, and so you'll get that. And so this, the water particle of it, ends up turning into this, coming there, and that comes in. That is due to this part on the pier stroke. So the fast way to write it then becomes like this, they're coming over and like that, which turns into that. That is the Chao Shu or Xing Shu form of Yong. You may have learned Yong Zi Ba Fa, the eight strokes of Yong, which are all the strokes used to write Chinese characters. Well, that's in the Kai Shu form or the standard form. You'll need to know this character and I'd be surprised if you're a native speaker and you didn't know this form, but I thought I'd start off with an easy one. Next character. Okay, this is a super, super common character. You ready? I'm gonna write it. What is that character? It's interesting, we have this again that we had in this last character where it's sort of kicking in, but what is that? It kind of looks like like this, like a pig, but it's, it's not really that, and it's got this extra one, but even when I see that, that doesn't look like something I'm familiar with. So let's break it down. Okay, when we see this, 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 this is often you will see this one also, this can be turned around. So that might also be like that. So often you also could get that. Um, so I'm analyzing it. So maybe if this is a hand coming down and then what have I got? I've got this crossing here and then I've got it up and over. Okay, this is starting to look familiar. You ready? So we have the hand and you have it crossing there. And then we've got another one across here and that's coming down, that's right. So this is of course war. Okay, this is a weapon being held in the hand, cutting down like this. Now, this version looks very strange. Other ways of writing it could be like this. 
Um, but this is actually a fast. You've got the hand coming down and then this comes out and then that goes across and you've got your strokes going down like that. Believe it or not, if you look in some old text, this is quite a common form of wa, meaning I in modern Mandarin. And then sometimes you'll even see in what almost looks like a casual form where it goes like this, and then you'll see the strokes written down like that. So that pretty much is what turns into that, going down, around, and out. So this is a handwritten form of Wo, which in Mandarin Chinese means I. Next character. Okay, number three, ready for it? I'm going out, around, down, and down. What is that character? Oh my gosh. Well, for the older generation, this is actually quite a normal form of this character. Um, if I were to break that out, you've got this stroke here, this stroke here, this coming down, and this stroke here, and that's, I guess, is kicking off there. Um, where is that coming from? Let me, got this coming down here, and then I've got this coming down and that coming in. You can see this kick again that happens. That's a, from the brush. I've talked in clips before on my cursive writing, and even in the hentai gana series on hiragana in Japanese, um, we always get this kick sort of coming back there. It's this whipping motion. Um, this is what's happening. And of course, you can see this is shi shijie, meaning world. Now, there are a bunch of ways you can write this. Um, some people do that, and then they will do this out here, and then this um, across the bottom. You see that kick is in there again. Other people will write this first, and then they'll put that, and then it could come down to that. That's pretty messy. Um, off, you'll see it coming down, probably about that height off of it. Um, and so this is where this is going. We've got this crossbar. We've got this coming um, down here. We've got this other crossbar and kicking out again. So this is a fast form of shi, meaning world. So you've got that cross there, there, coming down and out. Turns into going across. We've got this coming out and down, which turns into cross, this coming down, that coming down and out. So, shi, world, next character. Now, this next one, if you've ever done any calligraphy, you're going to have to know this. Ready for it? What is that? Uh, this is 101 for anybody doing cursive writing in Chinese. This, of course, has come from this which is actually the inside particle of that. Okay, so now I'll write it again, which is, now we'll say yue, but actually you'd know in Chinese there are two characters. You've got yue meaning moon, but you also have this character here with going up, which means flesh. And this actually is when you see the yue particle in a character, a lot of the time it means flesh. And so, uh, there are many, so for example, the word Ming, you'll get that going there and that coming down like this, that actually turns into that. And so just that inside piece um, of here is written with a stroke coming down like that. Don't get this confused, by the way, with the, which would be this coming down and going down kind of like that. That's a bit messy. The. Okay, so that would be the. This would be Ming. The Ming, the Ming. Almost look the same, but notice the difference is that stroke there. I'm sure you all knew that one, but let me test you with the next one, number five. Okay, ready for it? Here we go, number five, going around. What on earth is that? They all start looking the same. You remember the Yong from the first one that I wrote was kind of like that. Almost looks the same, but it's different. Actually, it reminds me when I was a kid, and I learned how to write in shorthand, both uh, Pittman's and um, Greg's shorthand. There are all of these squiggles here that represent syllables, but this is not. These are, I guess, Chinese um, syllables in some sense. There's a vernacular, there's a set of squiggles that actually have meaning. This is actually quite different to this one, but what is this? Um, notice this part here. Whenever you get that there, we remember that we had this character just now, the yeah particle or flesh. Um, okay, so let's suppose that was that. What is this one? We go across and out. What could that be? Well, have a look at this. In 
this, this is a right, well, it's a hand. So, zuo, yo. Uh, for left and right, this is zuo, and this is yo. This is a hand, all right? And so, when you're writing this stroke here, and then this down, you'll also get this short form where this stroke comes first. So this will come down and then that goes across. Now, what happens in handwriting when you're writing this stroke, notice that little bit there, that starts to get amplified. And so that comes down and gets across like that. And then if I add the U to it, then what is it then? Well, I've got the hand and I've got this part here. Of course, it's the character yo, meaning to have. So when I write that fast, one very common form of it is this one, whether it's xin shu or chao shu. Um, this is yo, meaning to have. So next time, if you wanted to say wo yo, I guess my normal handwriting for this, I'd write wo, but then yo. There you go. Number six, what is this character? You ready for it? What on earth is that? Okay, let me slow it down a bit. Um, there, okay. What is that? Okay, that's starting to really show what it is. Some people may be a little fuzzy as what that might be. Let me start to put it out. What is that? Okay, let me separate that again. I've got this dian down here. Um, normally when that links onto a hung, that turns into that. When I said this is actually four dimensional, this is what I mean. When I do this stroke, say the dian, I start with my pen heavy down, I push down, so it's actually going into the page really heavily, and then it comes out like this. So I guess if you had a brush, um, you'd be putting pressure in here, coming slowly lifting it off. Then when I get down to this stroke here, my pen's going down hard there and almost goes out in a figure eight, it lightens up here, so my hand's lifting off in this middle section and then it's pushing down. And if that were a brush, it's kicking back. And so that is why this turns into that, okay? When I'm writing it fast. So if this portion is actually this, and then two dots, what is that? Yes, that's the number six. And notice how this is kicking in. Um, a lot of foreigners, when they learn, they think this one going out here ends up looking kind of like that with a point at the end. It's not. Um, so that's six. And by the way, seven, which would be, you would see it written like that, but actually in cursive form, this is seven. And you'll see this kick coming back as well. There you go. Number six was number six. And you've got a bonus number seven, but not my number seven. So now we're going to look at character number seven. Okay, you ready for it? Now, this is one that everyone should know. Back in my day, if the older folk, everyone would know this one. You ready for it? Here we go. What is that? Well, let's break it down. Usually we know when we have this stroke here and that stroke, we separate them. But then what's happening here? Um, that can break down again. So we've got that would usually be this. And so we have a stroke up top, but what on earth is that? You ready for it? One. This, of course, is zheng. Now this in Chinese, if you're not Chinese, you may not know this, but when we count in English, one, two, three, four, five, this is how you count in Chinese. One, two, three, four, five. And there are two ways then of writing this. You can write this down. One, two, three, four, that's one. And you would actually see this in Japanese. I'll talk about it in the next character. Did I give it away? Um, but you see this form forming one form, but then you'll also see this joining onto this before you do that upstroke and then that. And so these are two forms of that Zheng character. So there we go. You could see it like that, or you could see it like that. You could see it like this. Um, anything like that, but generally when you see a little tag on the top coming down with this bit here, it is Zheng character. Next character, number eight. Here we go. Well, that's almost the same as the last character. What do we have? We've got this coming across, this coming up, that there. What is that? Well, if that was Zheng, take this off. So I've got Zheng here. 
Well, that without a lid is, of course, zhi, meaning to stop or to stand. In Japanese, you would know this as well,、um, meaning to stop. And the usual way of writing this would be one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Sorry, what am I saying? Five. So you could have it like that as well, or this faster way where you just. Um, have it coming up and then across like that. I、oh, missed it. There you go. So whether it's this way or this way, you know that it's come from this shape here, and that's the same component that we use in zheng there. Now, one thing I'd say on this: if you knew hiragana in Japanese, you would know to tachi to te to, and that indeed is the same. Character. This is where it actually came from. So they've just taken it from different cursive forms of the characters. Next character, number nine. Let's have a look at this. We're going down. Boom, boom. What is that? Now we just talked about hiragana in Japanese. If you write Japanese hiragana, you would know this character. What is it? Well, in hiragana, you would see it also something like that, I guess.、Um, Hope my explanation today will explain why it looks like it is and why it's proportioned the way it is.、Um, this, of course, in hiragana is fu, but what does it come from? Well, it comes from this. Bu. Okay, this is a little too long for my liking. So, if we have a look at one form of bu, we'll see this. Which, if you look in printed characters, it actually looks something like this, where this is. In the middle of this hung stroke, but actually in writing, this will come down like that, and then this one here has a little hook on it, and so that hook comes in from there and goes there. So what happens when we're doing cursive writing? A lot of the time, we swap character strokes to make things easier, and so this character, rather than doing second, we do all this middle bit first, and then do these bits. At the end, so if we change that round, and I did this middle bit, then I put this stroke in and put this stroke in. That's starting now to look like this. And so now, as I get faster, I've got the stroke up top and coming down, going there and there. So coming down,、um, that's a bit wonky, I guess. We'll do it again. Coming down, bang, and that. Any of those is bu in Chinese, meaning not, or fu in Japanese. This. Would be a standard, perfectly acceptable form of writing that. By the way, so would that.、Um, you could do it either way. I've seen in the older generations this is pretty common and going through older texts. Even in normal Xingshu, like cursive, standard cursive writing, not the crazy cursive writing. I guess you call it semi-cursive writing Xingshu. Now for the last one, you ready for it? Here you go. I've got this coming down here. Ah,、uh, bang, bang, bang! What is that character? This is a very common character, and I wouldn't be surprised if maybe some of the younger generation, maybe if you're over thirty, forties, you still write this character like this. What is it? Okay, I got a top on my character like that. So, what do we? What's the rule? We've got kind of this and a line、um, that usually turns into that. And then what about this character here? Well, I'm coming down and out, and going up, around. Okay, so I see this character here. We know if we've kicked in here, that could be a number of things. And this here, that is often,、uh, you've often got this portion of it. So for in B, right? Normally, if you to write it like that, it gets. Shortened like this, and then that kicks down. You can see this kick down again in there for B, right? So we know that that could be something coming out like that, and this crosses up. So let's put our clues together. So what is it? Well, let's have a look. We got that there. Got that coming down. Got this coming here. Yes, that is Jill. Now, when you write this faster, turns into that. Now, just like with this B. This stroke here comes all the way up, and then I can just come in here. Now this stroke here, remember this kick down when we have this pier coming down, and it normally kicked in. That's where this comes from, and so that kicks down, and then you've got the dot out there. And so to do it faster, there that is, 九九十 it is then. So subsequently happening after something.
you get this component in a lot of things, even say for this character here for dragon, right? Um, Any time that you get this up here, um, you will usually be able to lead on. So we have this lead turning into that up top and then that comes there and that goes there. So this kind of looks similar to that as well, except this comes out here for dragon where deal, this is coming down like that. They look similar, but as you start to get used to these, you get the cue. These are not just meaningless squiggles. The reason they look like that is because of what the hand muscles have done. And as you build that up over time, you start to develop these and it's natural. And so even though these days, the art of handwriting is a dying art and some people would argue that you don't need to learn how to actually write the characters. For me, part of Chinese, Japanese is actually having these characters in you, being able to feel them inside of you over time. They are four dimensional. You've got this Z axis also going into the page and then over time, lightening up, going down. And so if you have that, it's an extra anchor to help you memorize the characters as well and just feel the language, whether it's Chinese or Japanese or even Korean in your body. Do you like this? Let me know in the comments below. Would you like more of these? I got a ton of them. I'm Stuart J. Raj, scan the QR code and I'll see you on the other side.